Hi, welcome to How to Repair. I've been fixing dishwashers now for the last 40 years and the last 17 years on YouTube, thereabouts. And the most important tool I have in my toolbox are meters. These allow me to understand what's going wrong with the machine. I use multimeters, the normal clamp-on meter, and the most important is the display meter on my workbench or my portable device. Now these have come down so much in price now that I can't emphasize this enough. This is a must to have on your toolbox and I will show you why in this video. Not only will it show you the voltage that is being used, it will show you the wattage, the kilowatts that's used over the whole cycle, and it will even calculate how much this dishwasher costs to run over the last hot cycle. For example, I pre-programmed this to 36 pence per kilowatt, and over the whole cycle the machine used 45 pence worth of electric, and we actually used 1.264 kilowatts during the whole cycle. So let me explain how to test the heater, the main pump, the water valve, and the pump, or any other component on the machine that draws electricity. So let me explain how to use this meter. First thing I'm going to do is plug the meter in and I'm going to reset the meter. Just pressing the reset button and it's all set up correctly. Now the first thing you want to do, you'll notice that the time is at zero zero and the functionalities that we have are the wattage, the kilowatt hours used during the whole time until you reset again. We have the voltage because it's connected. We have 238.6 volts and we have 50 hertz frequency. The next button tells me the ampage the appliance will be drawing. And the last button gives me the low wattage usage and the high wattage usage. And then I've got it back on the basic functions. So the first thing you want to do is set your cost per kilowatt up to the correct level of your household. And this will vary from electricity company to electricity company all around the world. So I'm going to set this to 36 pence per kilowatt. And it's flashing in the corner. Press the function button once. That's pounds. That's pounds again. That's pence. And I'm going to set that to 30 pence. I'm going to press it again. And now I'm going to go up to six pence and I'm going to press the cost. That is now set and we're ready to start the machine. So the first thing, I've left water in the machine specifically now so you can see the pump which will be drawing 25 watts when under operation. The water valve is a 230 volt water valve and it should be drawing seven watts. The main motor is a 70 watt motor and the heating system is a 1650 watt heating system. Now when you understand the cycle of a machine and it will vary from brand to brand and also model to model because the cycles are very different. We're going to be setting this up on a hot superwash which normally takes about two hours and I know that this should cost about 40 pence per uh, wash cycle because it takes about two hours and 20 minutes. Now what the machine will do first is empty then it will fill then there will be a brief delay and the motor will come on at the same time the soap drawer flap should open and then it will go into a heating mode during the pre-wash cycle it will then finish its cycle after about 30-40 minutes and then it will go into another heat cycle for the main wash cycle and then it will empty again and then it will go through all the functionalities which it does on the drying mode. Now I'm not going to bore you with a two hour video so I'm only going to do the first five minutes of the cycle to show you all the different components working and then I'm going to be turning the camera off and waiting for it to kick in to the next appropriate cycle which I think you need to understand and you will see the time on the clock and the time on the display so this will give you a good idea what's going on so I'm going to plug the machine in and the first thing I'm going to do is turn the machine on it may start emptying immediately I've got it set to a 
super wash, which is two hours, 25 minutes. And even on standby, you can see that this is drawing 2.2 watts. I'm going to press the start button immediately and the pump comes on. Now the pump has got load on it at the moment. So it's drawing just over 20 watt, 25 watts of energy, plus any other components which have come on, like sensors and other bits and pieces. As it empties, you see the wattage drop slightly. That is because load has come off the motor. It's very important. Motors actually will fluctuate slightly on the power that they draw. Now the machine has stopped emptying and we've gone back down to our baseline figure. What will happen now is it will wait a second while it's working out what it's doing and it will start to fill. When it fills, we've got a baseline figure of 2 watts plus the 7 watts I'd expect to be seeing somewhere in the region of 10 watts of energy. Now as this goes through the whole cycle, as we watch the bottom line, which is the cost, water has just started entering the machine. Now because I've got a lapel microphone, it's very hard for me to actually let you hear the water going in because it's a slow, it goes through the water matrix. So we've got the water valve energized and we've also got a little impeller jug which counts the amount of liters going into the dishwasher. Now where this is useful is if your dishwasher was not filling and that was your problem, by plugging this device in, you can actually see that the solenoid is drawing power. Therefore, you might have a problem with either the filter in the back of the water valve that's clogged, or you may have a problem with no water going to the machine. Or you could have a problem where the flow matrix, which is a, a water turbine flow matrix with the impeller jug built in, this may actually be blocked and not allowing water to go into the machine, but you're seeing wattage being drawn and you know there is water present at the valve. Therefore, it is pointing you in the direction of the fault. So this can take filling between one and five minutes, depending on your water pressure, because the water pressure in different properties are at different levels. And this does fluctuate from apartment blocks to people that live in the countryside or even people who are on their own water supply with boreholes. And if you are on a borehole water supply, therefore you may get a lot of sediment coming into your water system if you don't have a correct filtration system. Don't forget, I make videos for multiple people around the world. So the main motor has now kicked in. The machine has finished filling and we are now drawing 75 watts of power. We said the motor was 70 watts. It's under load because there is water in the machine and the machine will continue to wash now until the heater energizes. We should hear a click on the door for the soap. That was it then, perfect timing. The soap dispenser then clicked, allowing the flap to open. The wattage only moved slightly. Certain components are very hard to understand because they only draw a small amount of wattage. The heater has just kicked in. We are now drawing 1850 watts total. So we have the machine has got a few other components on it. We have the motor, which is drawing 70 watts plus 1650 watts. Now you must remember this isn't an exact science because elements can wear, they pull more energy, and also on here it states 240 volts, 1650, but the pump states 230 volts, uh, 70 watt. So things do have slight variations on the amount of consumption that they're pulling, in other words, wattage and ampage. So while this is running here now, this will continue for about 15 minutes, 20 minutes on its first heat cycle while it's washing the dishes. And we have already drawn one pence worth of energy. And of course, because the heater is on, we are drawing 1.8 kilowatts every hour. So if this was heating for a whole hour, we would be up to maybe 50, 55 pence worth of energy. I know for a fact that this machine normally uses, because I did a previous video on repairing this machine, because it had a new pump, and that was the problem with it. And without this instrumentation, I could have been hunting around for quite a while trying to ascertain the problem. But straight away, this instrumentation allows you to understand what's going on. 
which is a really important side of the diagnostic process. If you are actually able to ever get a chart on your dishwasher to show you the wash cycle, you are able to put this into knowing that at 20 minutes it should empty, at 30 minutes it should do X, at 40 minutes it should do Y. Therefore you can keep an eye on your instrumentation to understand what is going on. Now I'm going to leave the machine now, go through until it disconnects from the heating system and at that point I will turn the video camera back on for you because I'm not going to stand here for two hours 17 minutes recording. It's a waste of your time and mine but I will literally jump in front of the camera as it goes through the cycle and we can see the machine now has been running for 6 minutes 30 seconds. It's drawn 3 pence worth of electricity and we have a consumption of 1830 watts at the moment and that tells me this machine is working perfectly. Of course, it, when I did the previous video on this machine and it, wasn't, uh, it was heating but there was no wash action, uh, I was able to ascertain that the motor was either open circuit or the circuit board was not sending electricity to the actual motor. And that's, this could be because of a faulty relay on the circuit board uh, or bad wiring connections or the motor had gone open circuit. In this case, the motor had gone open circuit and did need replacing. So anyway, I'll leave you with it for five minutes or ten minutes until the machine has finished heating and then we'll come back to the video. Okay, I just thought I'd give you a progress update. We've been running just over an hour now and the machine is cycling on the NTC sensor. This means that the heater is coming on as the temperature is needing to be kept at the 60 degree wash, which I believe this is. Uh, this has been cycling in and out for the last hour, maintaining the temperature. Now we should come to a point in a few minutes where the machine empties, but what I wanted to show you is the machine now is all heating uh, and everything is functioning perfectly. I just got a bit of steam on that side. So the machine now, although I've opened the door, it will re-energize in a second and the pump comes back on. Now it will do a few rinse cycles at a cold wash and then at the end of the program it will do a hot rinse cycle. This means it warms the plates up before it drains the water off so the plates actually dry inside of the machine over a 30 minute period. But while I'm waiting for this to empty, I just wanted to explain the other uses which you would be able to do with these actual meters. They are exceedingly good at un letting you understand the consumption of the individual appliances in your household. With electricity bills over the last year being so fluctuant, in other words going up, oh, it just went into empty, and the pump is engaged and as I said the pump is a 25 watt pump it's under load at the moment and there are other components so it's drawing 30, uh, 30 watts of power as the water empties which is just finished emptying the wattage drops slightly because there is no load on the pump and this is an important thing to understand pumps under load draw more power pumps not under load draw less power so this now will go into the filling process again and do a cool rinse. In other words, getting rid of all the detergent and bits and pieces off the plates and everything and taking them down into the collection filter at the bottom of the machine, which I showed you earlier. Uh, it will do a couple of pumps and the reason being is as the plates are dripping water, it kicks the pump back in again. Now it's gone into fill mode. I just heard water entering the machine. So we're dropping back down to just below 10 watts again. The machine will fill with water and then it will go through a rinse cycle. But as I was saying with these devices, not only are they very good for understanding what each individual appliance in the household is doing, it will let you learn how to utilize appliances to the best advantage in your household. Examples being, you may have solar on your property 
and even if you do not have a battery system and you're just solar to feed in grid it is more advantageous for you to be utilizing the appliances during daylight hours now there are delay uh, start features on a lot of appliances now and if for example you had a machine like this dishwasher or a tumble dryer or even a washing machine it might be advantageous for you to actually have the machine coming on at 11, 12 o'clock in the daytime when the sun or, you know, there is good light on your solar panels and they're producing electricity, therefore not sending this electricity to the grid when you're actually paying or being paid less to send it to the grid than actually when you actually draw current off the grid. So if this uses 1.2, 1.3 kilowatts, it's great for you to use this while it's in daylight hours because you're actually utilizing your own energy and that's one of the great things about this so anyway we've gone back into a cool uh, rinse cycle and the machine now is drawing 70 watts again which is the main pump motor as i said uh, it won't be doing heat on this rinse cycle it will be continuing through two or three rinses until it goes into the final rinse which will be a hot rinse so it dries the plates and I'll turn the video camera on again when it comes to that point I thought I'd turn the camera on again for you now it's actually done a cold rinse at 105 minutes left on the timer and it did another rinse or another empty sorry at 55 minutes and now it's in the process of doing a rinse cycle with heat and as you can see we're drawing 1800 watts again and the plates are being heated up by the hot water ready for the drying cycle to take place you see the plates need to be hot for it to dry the plates when it's on the last 30 minutes of the cycle thereabouts depending on the manufacturer of the machine let me go through the instrumentation quickly we've used uh, 26 pence worth of electricity at the moment and the machine has been running for one hour 33 minutes if i go through the functions on this we are drawing seven uh, sorry uh, we have used sorry 0.754 kilowatt of energy so far during this wash cycle and it shows you the amount of days at the bottom that's if you were leaving it on a machine for a long period of time the next function is showing me the voltage and the voltage at the moment is 238.4 volts and 50 hertz frequency of course the ampage is 7.6 amps that it's drawing and this is what it's drawing at the moment then the lowest point on the whole machine was 1.8 watts and the highest point on the machine was 1858 watts and if I flick back to the current point at the moment we are drawing 1.845 watts of power so that's 1.8 kilowatts of power that we're drawing once this gets back up to its 60 degree temperature again it will cycle on the NTC sensor and it will empty the water and it may go into a slight drying mode before it leaves the plates just sat in the machine for the last 20-30 minutes to dry the clothes this is normally when any uh, early models of dishwasher that had separate rinse aid components built into them uh, a lot of these machines nowadays are using tablets which have it all built in but sometimes you've got machines that actually use a rinse aid and that would be actually added on the last cycle to keep those plates crystal clear of any bits and pieces when they dry okay we've got to the point now where the heater cut off it topped a little bit of cold water into the machine i do not know what purpose this was for um, it basically now is at 37 minutes left on the cycle and if i opened the door now you would see that there is water in the bottom of the dishwasher let me just open it and it's steaming steaming a lot um, now that is basically leaving the hot water in the bottom of the machine creating a heat throughout the machine and this will allow the plates to dry now what will happen is at some point within the next 36 minutes the machine will empty that water and then the cycle will end I imagine I don't think we're going to have any more motor action at this point the plates are clean 
uh, if there were plates in the machine. And basically it's just going through its drying cycle, letting all the residue or water that's on the plates drip off and the plates are hot and therefore they will dry themselves. Okay, we're down to the last minute of the cycle and the machine is nice and warm, which it should be. The pump has just clicked in for the last time to empty any water from the bottom of the machine. And now it will just finish its cycle and the plates should be dry. I hope this video actually helped you in understanding the problems that can occur with machines and how these meters can help you rectify the problem. Not only rectifying the problems with the machine, but also letting you understand how the electricity is consumed during the cycle and the cost of what the appliances cost to run. This is such an important factor by understanding that the appliance has drawn 41 pence of energy. You are best equipped for actually understanding when to turn your appliance on in the household. And also you will be able to learn what different cycles cost to use. Now, if your plates are coming out perfectly clean on an eco cycle, then this is the one that you should be using. And all those 40 pences that you save by utilising the power at the correct time of day will save you no end of money over the long term. I hope this video helped you. Remember to support the website as that's what keeps us going and able to make these videos for you. And if you do save loads of 40 pences by utilising the electricity at the correct time of day, remember you can always click on the Buy Paula Beer page and support the website. And while it's doing that, let me just quickly show you a couple of things. This machine has used 1.151 kilowatts of energy during the whole cycle. It has run for 2 hours 30 minutes. Our voltage is slightly increased now. The top wattage was 1858 and we have used 41 pence worth of energy and now the machine has come to the end of the cycle. Thanks very much indeed for watching. I hope it helped you.